Praise the Lord. If you are there, as I'm here, I said, Praise the Lord. I welcome everyone at the Alpha location and online everywhere to a global retreat. Retreat is meant for us to get off out of the things around us, the things we're used to, and come apart so that the blessings of the Lord, this is not just crusade, it's a combination of the retreat and the crusade that the Lord will impact your life. And so we're appealing to everyone, members of the church, not members of the church, those who are inside and those who are outside that will allow the power of the word to work in every life and that our concentration will be on a total man having total transformation and for total triumph that your soul your spirit your heart your life your character your behavior everything that you do will be impacted by the word of god and there will be genuine and true and practical and progressing transformation in your life and in your ministry that you'll be another man another woman another boy another girl a christian that has revived a christian whose life is transformed a christian who goes beyond thinking of the things the mundane things of this world and you become a transformed transparent righteous revived believer i pray the lord will do it in every life yeah. give me a good good alpha location amen Father, we thank you at this time. We bless your name. What a great God, a good God, a glorious, gracious God you are. You brought us together for something good, something glorious, that lives will be transformed, that churches will be transformed, that everything, everyone coming to you will have the touch of the divine and the touch of heaven upon every life lord i pray that your purpose of having us at the retreat your purpose of gathering us together hearing your word will be fulfilled in jesus name be glorified in every life in jesus mighty name we pray and everybody said yeah. amen god bless you you can sit down we've well, been looking at the book of daniel we've looked at chapter one and the emphasis there is that as we come before the lord we become like daniel shedav meshach and abednego ten times better better in our relationship with god better in our spiritual life better in our day-to-day -day life that the grace of god the power of the lord would have touched our lives multiplied everything we got before and now we're 10 times better chapter 2 we look at the connection that we ought to have the reconciliation we are to have we look at the righteousness we are to have we look at the revelation we are to have and we look at the very fact that that direct connection divine connection actually brings a new revelation in our lives that as we go and out the things that were lost 
the things that other people are searching for what eyes have not seen what ears have not heard what had not entered into the heart of men that the people that love the Lord fear the Lord obey the Lord are faithful to the Lord that they will have those things and then reveal to the rest of the world today we're coming to chapter 3 of Daniel actually chapter 3 of Daniel Nebuchadnezzar the king showed his true nature he had said in chapter 2 there is no God like this that could reveal what I had forgotten that could reveal that unto me and he worshipped according to what he did the God of Daniel even worshipped Daniel and he promoted Daniel and he promoted Shedan Peshach and Abednego in the provinces of Babylon you will think he was converted no he wasn't converted chapter 3 shows that he wasn't converted he raised up an idol an idol of gold and he set it up in the place that he called Dura and then he called all the people his counselors his leaders everyone in the whole empire and he said when you hear the sound of the idolatrous music everyone shall fall down and worship the image that he had made and that image he knew he thought he planned symbolized him and so they began everybody fell down and then we are told three Hebrew children Shadrach Meshach and Abednego they will not fall down you will not fall down to idol the idol of Babylon, the idol of this world, the idol of this generation, the idols of men, the idols of women, you will not bow down in Jesus' name. And there were some psychophants there. There were some reporters there. They came to Nebuchadnezzar and they said, O King Nebuchadnezzar, have you not commanded that the moment anyone hears the sound of the cornet and the flute and the dulcimer and the instruments of Babylonish instrument music, they shall fall down? Oh, yes, that's what I said. I, Nebuchadnezzar, the final authority on earth, they said, the three people three men of those uh, jewish slaves captives they will not fall down to your idol he said what is there anybody here in my empire that will exalt any other god above me bring them here and so they brought shadrach meshach and abednego and he said he looked at them that man he didn't regard the god of heaven neither did he fear any man and he said is it true shadrach meshach abednego that you will not fall down to my idol then he said i give you a second chance that's what the world will do you won't follow the idol of the land you won't change you won't mellow down you won't fall before the demand of the world we give you a second chance if at the time you hear the sound of the worldly music you fall down all right i forgive the past if not then he asks billion dollar question who is that god that will deliver you out of my hand thank god for the people that have faith in the god of heaven confidence trust in the god of heaven they said oh nebuchadnezzar the king we 
are not careful to answer you the question you are asking if it be so our god whom we serve the god of heaven the god most high the god the creator of the universe he created fire he created water and is in control in charge he will deliver us out of your hand O king and now they said Nebuchadnezzar keep cool if not if we have to pass through this to glory land still know that we will not bow down to your idol the man was angry furious flaming and he commanded his people to heat a fire the furnace seven times hotter and then he commanded the most respectful honorable powerful men in his kingdom that they should throw shadrach meshach and abednego into the burning furry furnace and he did the flame of the fire coming out of the furnace bunch them up they died for nebuchadnezzar and they went to eternity where faithful people will not go they went to the other side and then shadrach meshach and abednego men of faith men of faithfulness and men that had fortitude courage to stand they fell down the cords were burnt and then they rose up and they were walking and nebuchadnezzar wanting to see the result of his action he peeped into the furnace and he turned around to his counselors those that were still alive he said did we not cast three men into the furnace they said yes nebuchadnezzar king then he said i see four men they are not lying down they are walking they are not in a hurry majestic i see four men walking in the fire he said that shadrach you know him that's meshach i recognize him that's abednego i see his picture there and now i see the fourth one he said and the appearance of the first one is like the very son of god and now he calls them he said shadrach meshach abednego servants of the most high god he now knew them and he knew their god he had been asking who is that God that will deliver you out of my hand? And now he recognized, number one, the existence of the Most High God. Now he understood the exaltation of the Most High God. And now he knew the elimination of the Most High God that came now to pray, that came down to prominence. And he said, come out. And he came out. And they examined them and they saw that there was no sign of the fire of the fairy furnace upon them and again in his own characteristic way he said i make a decree that anyone that speaks against the god of shadrach meshach and abednego will be destroyed and his house will be his house will be made a donkey that's the story and from the story want to learn for ourselves why because all the things that were reaching at for time were reaching for our learning that we through the comfort and the patience of scriptures might have hope that's why we're learning from this story the faith that quenches the fiery furnace any furnace in your life any trial in your life any furry furnace in your life you will overcome in jesus name
Look at Daniel now, chapter 3. I'm reading from verse 24. It says, Then Nebuchadnezzar the king was astonished, surprised, amazed, and rose up in haste. And he spake and said unto his counselors, Did not we cast three men bound into the midst of the fire? They answered and said unto the king, True, O king. Look at verse 25. He said, He answered and said, Lo, I see four men loose. They are not bound anymore. You'll not be bound anymore walking in the midst of the fire and they have no heart and the form of the fourth is like the son of god verse 26 then nebuchadnezzar came near to the mouth of the burning furry furnace and spake and said shadrach meshach and abednego ye servants of the most high god come forth and come hither then shadrach meshach and abednego came forth from the midst out of the midst of the fire verse 27 and the princes governors and captives and the king's counselors gathered together and saw these men upon whose bodies the fire had no power, nor was an air of their head singed, neither were their coats changed, nor the smell of the fire passed on them. Verse 28. Then Nebuchadnezzar spake and said, Blessed be the God of Shadrach, of Meshach, and of Abednego. And as who has sent his angel and delivered his servants that trusted in him, his servants that trusted in him the believers that trusted in him and have changed the king's word and yielded their bodies that they might not serve nor worship any god except their own god the faith that quenches the fire the faith that overcomes the fire the faith that brings the law and the custom of Babylon on the feet. The name and the power and the faith that makes a believer triumph in trial and tribulation. The faith that quenches the furry furnace. Three things we're looking at. Number one, the courageous few who will not bow to folly foolishness idolatry foolishness making an idol foolishness painting it covering it with gold foolishness asking people to bow down to an image made by man and to think of that like god that's foolishness the foolishness of the foolish falling and the courageous faith of the faithful few who would not bow to folly. Number two is the confident faith that would not bend on the fury, the anger of Nebuchadnezzar, the anger, the fury of the king, the anger and the fury of the world, the confidence we have in God, the trust we have in God, the reliance we have on God and the disposition of not being fearful, not being timid, not trembling, whatever you see of the fury of the anger of Nebuchadnezzar, the confident faith that would not bend on the fury. Number three, the consecrated faithfuls, that is the faithful people. 
They're saved. They're faithful. They're sanctified. They're faithful. They're filled with the Holy Ghost. They're faithful. They're saturated with Scripture. They're faithful. They know the way of the Lord and the demand of the Lord. And they're faithful. The consecrated faithfuls who would not burn in the fairy furnace. And I pray what we learn today will be instilled in your heart and the transformation we ought to have and the triumph we ought to have will come upon your life in Jesus name somebody shout say amen number one is the courageous few who will not bow to folly and that you find in Daniel chapter 3 but it's one to twelve. This we look at three things here. Three things. Number one, the inconsistency of the religious. Number two, the idolatry that is still reigning on the earth. Number three, the indignation against the righteous. Look at number one there. It's the inconsistency of the religious. Have you noticed how Nebuchadnezzar was very religious? And then he was introduced to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And he knew who God was mentally from the testimony, from the revelation of Daniel. And yet, even though, look at chapter 2, Daniel chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 47. In Daniel chapter 2, verse 47, it says, The king answered unto Daniel and said, Of a truth, it is that your God is a God of gods. You think a man like that was converted? And a Lord of kings, you think? He was now, he had a change of mind, a change of heart, and a revealer of secrets. Seen thou couldest reveal their secret. Look at verse 48. And he said, Then the king made Daniel a great man and gave him many great gifts and made him ruler over the whole province of Babylon and the chief of the governors over all the wise men of Babylon. Look at verse 49. In verse 49, then Daniel requested of the king and he said, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego over the affairs of the province of Babylon. But Daniel sat in the gate of the king. What do you think? You think the man was now a believer and the man now understands there's a God in heaven that reveals secrets. You think the man was not going to follow the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? But no. Look at chapter 3 now, verse 1. Immediately after that, chapter 2, where he affirmed and confirmed there's a God in heaven in line with what Daniel had said immediately after Nebuchadnezzar the king made an image of gold whose height was three score cubits and the breadth thereof six cubits and he set each arm in the plain of Dura and in the province of Babylon, and he wanted to shift the face, the eyes, the mind, the heart, the focus of everyone away from the God of heaven unto an idol. And that's the reason why, as we come to the retreat and the crusade, if we say that this God of heaven will not be my God, that this God of heaven, the one that reveals secrets, and the one that heals the seed, and the one that destroys the works of the devil, and the one that delivers the oppressed, that he will be my God. Well, after the crusade, the day after the crusade, the week after the crusade, the months after the crusade, will really tell whether your faith is like a kind of a faith that passes away like that of 
Nebuchadnezzar. Second Kings chapter 17. I'm reading from verse 33. In Second Kings chapter 17, verse 33, they feared the Lord. Nebuchadnezzar, he feared the Lord, a God that can reveal this kind of secret, a God that can so manifest that what I had forgotten, he will reveal that he feared the Lord and served their own gods. That's how the people of the world are. They can come for religious festival religious celebration religious tradition they can come for a religious scene crusade retreat convention and whatever but while they are there they appear to fear the lord but then they serve their own gods after the manner of the nation Suma, they carried away from this verse 34 in verse 34 Unto this day, they do after their former manners. Those who say they believe in God, I'm born again, I'm saved. Now, I recognize the God of heaven, but unto this day, they do after their manners. They continue in their smoking, they continue in their drinking, they continue in their womanizing, they continue in their adultery, they continue in their fornication, they continue in their defilement, they continue in their tradition, they continue in their evil, sinful, depraved character. They say unto this day, they do after their manners and they fear not the Lord. In verse 33, they fear the Lord, O oh God, O oh God, O oh God. And then when it comes to the practical, where the robber meets the road, it really shows they do not fear God, they fear not the Lord, neither the day after their statues or after their ordinances or after the law and the commandment which the Lord commanded of the children of Jacob whom he named Israel. Look at number two there. Number two, we're talking about the idolatry that is still reigning. The idolatry. The idolatry of Nebuchadnezzar that is still reigning. Hear the music of Babylon and bend down and worship Hear the music of the world and forget righteousness and forget the commandments of God. Hear the music of the world and get to your nightclub and live it up. And do whatever you want to do. On Sunday then you can go to church. And you can say God. We have done what we shouldn't have done. We have not done what we should have done. We are sinners. Sinners before. Now they are born again. They are sinners. They are sanctified. They are sinners. They are worshipping. They are sinners. It's the attitude of the world. That there is no change in their lives at all. It tells us in Daniel chapter 3 verse 7 it tells us there it says therefore at that time when all the people heard the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackboard, sacktree, and all the kinds of music, all the people, all the people, all the people, all those counselors that said, yes, you cast three men into the furnace, and now therefore, all those men, all the people that examined Sigurd, Meshach, and Abednego, and uh, they will not see anything on them all the people that had known all the magician that heard that the king had forgotten his dream and now the god of daniel was able to reveal that all of them without exception they all when they heard they fell down and worshiped the idol that nebuchadnezzar had set up the idolatry that is still prevalent today the idolatry people worship themselves they worship their opinions they worship their self-image they worship their self-idea 
They worship self-esteem. They worship their own self-will. The idolatry that still reigns today. Look at Romans chapter 1. Reading from verse 25. Who changed the truth of God into a lie. And worshipped and served the creatures more than the creator. They worship and search the creatures more than the creator. What do you worship? You worship a car. That's the best thing in your life. You worship the house. You build the creature. The creation of the hand of man. You worship a woman. A creature. You worship a man. And when the man, when the woman says... Here is the way to go. You tremble for that woman more than you tremble in the sight of God. You, you worship your neighbor. You worship all the things around you. Or you worship yourself, a mere creature of yesterday. They worship the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. Look at verse 26. In verse 26 it says, for this cause God gave them up unto vile affections. The people that say, all right, they'll worship the creature. They'll worship a man. they rather worship a woman, they rather worship whatever the hand of man has made or created. The Lord says, that's what you want to worship. You want to abandon me and worship the creature more than your creator. Have your own way. And then it says, for even the women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Verse 27. In verse 27, and likewise also the men, the women, the worship, the creatures, they worship how they feel, how they look, how they see, and they worship what projects them to the world. And then it says, even the men also, leaving the natural use of of a woman, burnt in their lust, and they worship the feeling of their body, the emotion of their body, the pleasure of the body, the pleasure of the day, and the pleasure of the night. And there are people like that, they forget that they are saved. They forget they are born again. They forget that a transformation has taken place. If any man be in Christ, it's a new creature. Old things have passed away, and behold, all things have become new. They forget all about that. They forget their conversion. They forget their conviction. They forget their consecration. Once they see a woman finished, and all their emotion, all their feeling, you know, is what will be driving them. They forget their testimony of being born again and it says they lost one toward another and it says men with men walking that which is unseemly and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error which was meet look at verse 28 and it says an even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge. Yes, on Sunday they come, they say they believe in God, they worship God. When they get to the market, they don't want to retain God in their knowledge. They can deceive, they can steal, they can cheat. They do not want to retain God in their knowledge. When it comes to marriage, they want to retain God in their knowledge. When it comes to practical Christian living, all the salvation, they leave that behind. And all their profession testimony, they leave that behind. They do not want to retain God in their knowledge. God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not Convenient. Second Thessalonians chapter 2, I'm reading from verse 4. Who opposes and exalteth himself above 
all that is called God. That's exactly what Nebuchadnezzar was doing. He was raising up this idol of gold. And he said, I don't know any other God. This is me. And this is chapter 3. I occupy everything. I about the stone in chapter 2 that came and was thrown at that image of gold and silver and brass and iron and clay. And that stone became a mountain that occupied the whole earth. Uh -uh. I don't want to know about that. All he knew was the idol he raised up who opposes and exalted himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped so that he as God seated in the temple of God showing himself that he is God. Was that only for Nebuchadnezzar? Every sinner, every backslider, everyone that professes, I know God, and yet the siege as God, the center of attraction, and the world revolves around them. And the center of activity is the man there. And everybody must come and bow down to him. It's the woman there. Everybody must come and bow to her. It's the idolatry that still reigns today in the world. Look at number three here. Number three here, the indignation against the righteous, the righteous, the people, they were not just professing that they were believers, they stood as believers, they thought as believers, they decided as believers, they lived as believers. Fire, rain, sunshine, water, they remained as believers, stretch. Promise, persecution, promise, they remained as believers. Those are the righteous people. They are the same, the same conviction they manifest in church. It's the same conviction they carry to the marketplace. The same conviction they carry everywhere. And whatever they face, and whatever challenges came, the doctrine they believed, they lived by that doctrine. The righteous, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They didn't worry. They didn't mind the fury and the anger of Nebuchadnezzar. We're looking at Daniel chapter 3. We're reading from verse 8. In verse 8, wherefore at that time certain Chaldeans came near and accused the Jews. Verse 9, they spake and said, to the king Nebuchadnezzar, O king, live forever. That's what they always say, but sinners don't live forever here on earth. And they don't live forever in the place where God has made for his own. They live forever on the other side in the burning fire. And then in verse 10, it says, Thou, O king, has made a decree that every man that shall hear the sound of the cornet, flute, harp, sackbut, sartre, and dulcimer, and all kinds of music shall fall down. Did you hear that? You have said every man shall fall down and worship the golden image. Verse 11, it says, and whosoever for let not thou and worship it, that he should be cast into the midst of a burning fairy furnace. And then in verse 12, there are certain Jews whom thou hast set up over the affairs of the province of Babylon, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. These men, O king, have not regarded thee they serve not thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up 
verse 13. Then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage, anger, fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. I want you to imagine how Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they said, Okay, you're not bowed down. The king is calling you. They knew Nebuchadnezzar and they knew his decree and they knew whatever he decided, he cared for no man, he cared for no officer, he cared for no God. They knew, but as they came, they were cool, they were collected, they were calm. There was no fear in them. They were serving the God of heaven. Even their posture will tell. Their language, their body language could tell. They were calm. They were cool. They were collected because of their conviction. If you have the conviction that God is God, if you have the conviction that God is greater than man, if you have the conviction that God has the final say, the decree of the unbeliever, the decree of the world, and the decree of Nebuchadnezzar will not jolt you or frighten you or make you to be reconsidering your conviction. They believed in the Lord. I pray our faith will be like the faith of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego in Jesus' name. Somebody there will shout, Amen. In Luke chapter 12, look at the words of Jesus Christ in verse 4. And I say unto you, my friends, and I say unto you, my followers, and I say unto you, my disciples, and I say unto you, those who have tasted of Calvary, and those who have known the power and the strength of the Lord, those who in a practical way, the Spirit of God bearing witness in their heart, they were children of God, and I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more than they can do. In verse 5, but I will forewarn you, whom ye shall fear. Don't fear Nebuchadnezzar. Don't fear the gods of this world. Don't fear those who threaten you in this world. I will forewarn you, whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he has killed, has power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. In Second Timothy chapter 3, reading from verse 12, it says, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were going through persecution, but they went through that persecution faithfully. They went through that uh, persecution confidently. They went through that, uh, uh, that persecution with faith in God. They didn't allow the threat of any man on earth, the threat of any personality on earth, to shake them and to make them forget their conviction in the Lord and make them compromise. Yea, yes, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Look at verse 13. It says, But evil men and seducers will wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Then in verse 14, it says, But continue thou. Continue thou. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego continued 
when they were promoted they continued worshiping the lord when the threat came they continued worshiping the lord when they made the fire the very furnace they continued worshiping the lord and when they saw the fury of nebuchadnezzar they continued worshiping the lord and serving the lord and when they commanded those three those men to throw them into the fire they didn't shake they didn't tremble they didn't compromise they continued serving the lord and when they got into the fire the fourth the fourth man appeared the lord jesus can say manuel god with us they continue worshiping the lord and when they told them shadrach meshach abednego servants of the most high god come out come forth they came forth they continue serving the lord until the end of their lives you are serving the lord that's true believing that's real faithfulness that in any situation you find yourself if you are truly saved if you are truly believing in the Lord and you have confidence in the Lord, relying on the Lord all the days of your life, you continue serving the Lord. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learned them. You will continue. I will continue. You continue in Jesus' name. We're coming to point number two now. Point number two, the confident faith, not the cowardly faith. Faith is not cowardly. And faith will not be trembling, but the confident faith that would not bend under fury under fury uh, there are people when you hear a furious voice maybe over the telephone <laughs> even though they cannot see the man the woman but the woman the man has a way of terrorizing of terrifying just by the sound of her voice you're shaking on this side what is your faith the other fellow on the on the other side of the phone is just a man, it's just a woman. Or when they hear somebody and comes to them and looks at them with fury, with anger, and then shouts on them, bullies, and try to bully them into submission, they are trembling. Where is your faith? Where's your confidence in God? And where is your pro where is your profession in the Lord? Faith means that if you have already trembled before God, you are not going to tremble before man. If you have already submitted yourself, heart, spirit, soul, and mind unto God, you are not going to submit yourself unto the threats of man. The confident faith that would not bend under fury. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the courageous faith that will not compromise. Number two, the concourse faith that would not be cowardly. And number three, the compelling faith that cannot be corrupted. Number one, number one is the courageous faith that will not compromise. What kind of faith do you have? You stand up in the church. I praise the Lord for the salvation of my soul. I praise the Lord for the healing of my body. I praise the Lord because he brought me into the light of the gospel. That's in church now, outside the church, in the marketplace. And they say, anybody that will not pay the money for idol will not sell in this market. Where is your faith now? Where is your confidence now? Or maybe you want to get married. Anyone, if you're not going to offer alcohol, you know, go your way. Go your deeper way, your Bible way here. Anybody that is going to pay dowry must bring 
this and that. And then you say, I want to get married. And these people, that's what they want. Okay, I don't drink. But if that is what they want, I give unto them. There you are. Where is your faith? They say, if you are going to enter into any institution, eh, I score this mark, I score that mark. But except you do this and that, we're not going to admit you here. And you say, but I want to get to university. And then even though I have the right mark, but they say in that institution, this is what I will do. What will I do now? Where is your faith? The courageous faith that will not compromise. In Daniel chapter 13, chapter 3, verse 13, then Nebuchadnezzar, in his rage and fury, commanded to bring Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Then they brought these men before the king. Look at verse 14. In verse 14, Nebuchadnezzar spake and said unto them, Is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? I do not ye serve my gods, nor worship the golden image that I have set up. And then we're told in the next verse, verse 15, Now, if ye be ready, if you reconsider, if your life is precious to you, I will waste that life. Look at that fairy furnace. I'll throw you inside there. Every dream you ever had, every vision you ever had, every projection you ever had, I'll burn everything up in that fairy furnace. If you be ready, that at what time you hear the sound of a cornet, flute, harp, sad but sultry and dulcimer and all kinds of idolatrous music ye fall down and worship the image which i have made well but if ye worship not ye shall be cast ye shall be thrown the same hour into the midst of a burning furry furnace and who is that God that shall deliver you out of my hands verse 17 if it be so our God whom we serve is able our God is able my God is able if they collapsed, if they fell down, if they were fearful, if they were cowardly, if they had compromised, will not be reading their story today. If you collapse at the hour of temptation, at the hour of trial, at the hour when your life is on the line, if you collapse, if you compromise, if you shake, if you tremble, if you fear, you fear for your life, and you say, what am I going to do now? Nobody will read your history. Nobody will read your story. And if you die in that condition, we will not see, even see you in heaven. But Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they said, if it be so, our God, whom we serve, is able to deliver us from the bony furry furnace, and he will deliver us out of thy hand, O king. Look at verse 18, in verse 18, but if not, be it known unto thee. O king, now Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were not looking down. When you're looking down, it's like you're guilty about something. You're afraid of something. You don't want to be detected. You don't want to be known. So you cannot raise your head. You're looking down. What are you hiding? Look up. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego looked up and they saw the king, and he saw the fury on his face. The anger had come from the bottom of his heart and had oozed out of his eyeballs. And yet they said, go ahead, Nebuchadnezzar, we serve a God who is still alive. 
a God who will protect us and preserve our lives and he will deliver us out of your hand and then they said but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image that thou hast set up somebody give me a great amen, amen. look at number two there now number two is the conqueror's faith the faith that conquers fearful people never conquer you will not conquer your thoughts you will not conquer your mind you will not conquer your life you will not conquer your environment you will not conquer your circumstance you will not conquer your situation you will not conquer any problem you will not conquer the threat you will not conquer the persecutor you will be a rat in life the people will be walking all over you when you're fearful, when you're timid. It is faith that makes us to conquer. And you can make your choice who you want to be in life. A conquered, humiliated person that is crawling before everyone and does not have a conviction of his own, a mind of his own, or a conqueror. A conqueror that says, here I stand. There may be as many devils and there are tiles on the ground. But here is my conviction. The just shall live by faith. It is the faith we have in God that makes us to conquer and we will not be cowardly. Look at chapter 3 of Daniel verse 16. Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego answered and said to the king, they didn't whisper to people around I will stand I will stand they can only whisper they cannot look at Nebuchadnezzar face to face and say Nebuchadnezzar here I stand they said oh Nebuchadnezzar we are not careful to answer thee in this matter in verse 17 if it be so, our God whom we serve is able. My God is able. My God is able. Uh -huh. If you know your God is able to keep you on that job, what is it you are afraid of, uh, you know, the manager there, the director there, the local uh, idol there, and you become... <clears throat> Excuse me to you to use the word like zombie. You are there and everything is down. No heart, no mind, no righteousness, no conviction. They push you this way, yes, sir. They push you that way, yes, sir. You have no mind of your own. And you have no heart of your own. And you don't have any confidence in yourself. All the decisions you ever took in your life, you're forgotten. Your hands are to your back. And your shoulders are down. Because the director there, wherever there, if you don't do this and submit your body, for this and for that. You will never make it in this place. Okay, what can I do now? What you can do now is to remember Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And stand for righteousness. And nobody will cower you or make you compromise in Jesus' name. It says, if it be so, our God whom we serve is able to deliver us from the burning furry furnace and he will deliver us out of thy hand O king I hear you but when you taste the fire you will change your mind verse 18 but if not if he doesn't deliver us we don't know his mind we don't, we're not in the counsel of God. He might have ordained from all eternity that we will go home. 
through the phonies will pass through your phonies and then go to heaven that might be his decision he is God and therefore if that is his decision that our body will suffer that our spirit may be released unto him eternity so be it but if not be it known unto thee O king that we will not serve thy gods nor worship the golden image which thou hast set up there are some materials that are strengthened by fire there are other materials that are burnt off by fire if you are the stuff of wood fire will burn you up if you are the stuff of hay fire will burn you up if you are the stuff of chaff the fire will burn you up but if you are the stuff of gold of silver of brass if you are the stuff of a good metal the fire will only purify you and so Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego they were not chaff they were not wood they were not hay they were of the stuff of a real metal and they knew the fire will just brighten them up I pray whatever threat whatever fire whatever the indignation of the enemy it will not burn you up it will brighten you up am i talking to somebody there it will brighten you up and the more persecution the more righteousness the more steadfastness and the more solidity in your life are coming to i say chapter 54 and i'm reading from verse 14 it says in righteousness shall thou be established thou shalt be far from oppression for thou shalt not fear and from terror for it shall not come near thee verse 17 verse 17 no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper and every tongue that rises against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn this is the heritage of the servants of the lord and their righteousness is of me says the lord we're looking at number three here number three here is the compelling faith that cannot be corrupted the faith that compels the persecutor to turn around and to say the man is not like we thought the woman is not like we thought that believer truly this one is deeper this one is higher this one is greater this one is brighter this one has gone beyond the surface of religion this one has gone in depth in his understanding in his conviction and it is the persecutor that will be compelled by your faith that you have the right stuff we're looking at daniel chapter 3 verse 17 again if it be so our god whom we serve is able to deliver us he will deliver you from nebuchadnezzar he'll deliver you from lucifer he'll deliver you from the tormentor he'll deliver you from the people that have the powers of darkness and they say if you say you are going to obey any other person christ god anywhere bible anywhere that we are the powers here in the village the powers here in this community the powers here on earth that we will show you we will smear pepper on your face you'll never forget your faith 
will compel them to turn around. You will not be corrupted. You will not be cowered down. And you will not be confused either because your faith, your faith first of all, compels you from within. Your faith compels your life to walk in the right direction. And your faith compels everything around you to now take you as you are. You know, if you don't have the faith that compels, you know, you'll be the ball for every footballer. And then they kick you here and there. You're not even know to follow the straight path. But when you have a compelling faith, the faith that stands, the faith that will not budge, the faith that will not bend, they will be compelled to know that our God is able. Is your God able? Look at Hebrews chapter 7, verse 25. Hebrews 7, verse 25, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost. Whatever your condition, whatever your surrounding, whatever your environment, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever live to make intercession for them. Look at Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. It says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh in us. That power will walk in you today. In all your circumstances, in all the persecution, in all the threats, in everything you know, that was supposed to pull you down, put you down, and crush you and forget about you, the power that walketh in you will lift you up in Jesus' name. Today is the day of your victory. The day of your triumph and the day of power in your life in Jesus' name. Point number three now, we're looking at the consecrated faithfuls. The consecrated faithfuls are the faithful in the Lord. They have come before the altar of the Lord. They had laid everything on the altar. Consecrated. My son, give me thine heart. They have brought their heart. They have laid that at the altar of the Lord. My son, give me your loyalty. They've brought their loyalty and they have brought their conviction. They laid it on the altar. Lord, what you say, I will go. What you say, I will do what your command I will obey. My son, grant me the honor of a father. And you have come in consecration. And all the honor you can think of, hallowed be thy name. The will be done on earth as it is done in heaven. And you have brought that honor unto the Lord. And everything you have brought to the Lord, your heart, your loyalty, your faithfulness, the honor, and everything you have, you've laid upon the altar, you are not going to take back anymore. That's consecration. And you are faithful to the commitment you have made unto the Lord. The consecrated faithfuls who would not burn in the very furnace. We're looking at three things here. Number one, the threat of persecution in the very furnace. Number two, the torture of the polluted in the furry furnace, number three, the triumph of the peer over the fearsome furnace. Look at number one. Number one, the threat of persecution in the furry furnace. Have you ever been threatened by anybody? Somebody close? Somebody familiar? 
Somebody who helped you in chapter 2 of Daniel. Somebody who promoted you in chapter 2 of Daniel. Have you been threatened by anybody? Now we're in chapter 3, week 2. Week 1. They examined you and they said you are ten times better. They love you for your intelligence. They love you for the ability. They love you for your skill. And then chapter 2, week 2, they loved you because you are associated with the revealer of secrets. And now week 3, they forget all the promotion they gave you before. They forget all the promises they gave you before. And they forgot all the promises they have made to you before. And now they in chapter 3. They were using week 1, week 2 to buy you over. They were using the promise and the promotion to buy you over. They were using the help they offered you before to buy you over that now you forget your God and you bow to them completely. But you are still of the mind of the faithful. That you are not going to sell your conviction. You are not going to sell your commitment. You are not going to sell your consecration and the moment you show that here you stand you'll not sell yourself into their hands then they turn around and they become persecutors but well, thank God you will stand I will stand Although the bush may be burning, but the bush will not be consumed. No fire will consume you in Jesus' name. Keep cool, keep calm, keep collected. Nothing that Nebuchadnezzar, any Nebuchadnezzar, any despot of this world, nothing they can do to change your destiny in Jesus name Isaiah chapter 43 and I'm looking at verse 2 Isaiah chapter 43 verse 2 when thou passest through you'll pass through I will pass through Look at that ocean. Look at that Red Sea. We will pass through the Red Sea. Look at that Jordan. We will pass through that Jordan. Look at the river, the water ahead of you. It will not drown you. It will not swallow you up. Because when thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. And when thou walkest through the fire thou shalt not be burnt there are people that read the bible and they read the bible from cover to cover every year and yet 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 when the fire of Nebuchadnezzar stands before them and the fire is heated seven times over although they have read the Bible over and over and over they forget what they have read or maybe they say yes God said so but God cannot do what he has said if I go into that fire I'll be burnt up but here is the promise of God that when thou walkest through the fire thou shalt not be burnt if Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego did not stand for God we would not have known that this promise here could be fulfilled if you don't stand if you cringe if you compromise, if you are cowardly, we will not know that the promise of God can be fulfilled. That when thou passest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Amen in your life. Look at number two there. Number two there is the torture of the polluted in the fairy furnace the torture of the polluted is the those who are polluted even if Kadnesa himself if you remain in that condition Belshazzar weighed and found wanting if you remain in that condition and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and the persecutors of the righteous if they do not repent they will be the people that will spend eternity in the lake of fire we're looking at Revelation chapter 
chapter 14 and we're looking at verse 10 it says and the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God not just the wrath of Nebuchadnezzar the fury of Nebuchadnezzar but the wrath of God which is poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation and he shall be tormented in the fire with fire and brimstone and sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and in the presence of the Lamb. In verse 11 and then it says and the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever forever and ever and they have no rest nor night day nor night who worship the bees and his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name I will not go there I will not be there. I will love, I will honor, I will obey the God of heaven and I will spend eternity with the Lord in Jesus' name. Look at number three now. Number three is the triumph of the pure. The triumph of the pure now. The whole world is in pure. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And being justified by faith, we have peace with God. We come to God, we are reconciled with God. And that's how we have that cleansing. That's how we have that peace with God and the peace of God. And we are reconciled with God. You are washed in the blood of the Lamb. You have peace with God and then it says you put yourself blessed at the pure in heart salvation peace with God sanctification purity of heart blessed at the pure in heart for they shall see God and then after the peace and the purity, there is the power. For you shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you. The power to stand before any Sanhedrin. The power to stand before any Pharisee and any Sadducee. Did we not let say charge you that you should not preach in this name? But look at it now. You fill Jerusalem with your doctrine. And he said, if that be right in the sight of God. You judge thee. We will rather obey God than men. That's the power of the Holy Ghost that makes you to stand. Peace with God. Purity through Christ. And the power of the Holy Ghost. And we're told the triumph the pure will have over fearsome Funnies. Look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 8. It says, Blessed are the pure in heart. The pure in heart, Nebuchadnezzar will curse them. The pure in heart, the Pharisees will threaten them. The pure in heart, the world will ridicule them. Aha, uh -huh, pure, pure. Aha, uh -huh, holy, holy. Aha, uh -huh, pastor, pastor. Aha, uh -huh, perfection, perfection. The world will ridicule them, but the God of heaven will honor them. He will uh, admit them into his eternal paradise. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. I pray you will see God. The pure that will not compromise. The pure that will not be cowardly. The pure that will retain their conviction until the final end. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. In First John chapter 3, reading from verse 1, it says, Behold, what manner of love has the Father bestowed upon us, that we shall be called the sons of God. Therefore, the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Verse 2, it says, Beloved, saved, 
Beloved, sanctified. Beloved, baptized and filled with the Holy Ghost. Beloved, having peace with God. Beloved, having the purity of heart. Beloved, having the power, the power to stand. Beloved, now are we the sons of God? And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when he shall appear, we shall see him, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Look at verse 3, in verse 3 there, and every man that has this hope of spending eternity with God in heaven, every man that has this hope, not just being religious here and call part of the church here, religious here, and everyone that has this hope of going through everything on earth and being in heaven eventually. Every man, every woman, everyone, every person that has this hope in him, Purify himself even as he is pure. Purifies himself. And when you are purified like that, the fear of the world is cleansed away from your heart. And the cringing to the world, all that is taken away from you. The depravity of sin and of the sinful nature is taken away from you. And you are able to say, like Christ said, the prince of this world cometh and has nothing in me. This is the hour of your being purified. He will purify you. And all the things of the world still attach to you in your mind, in your heart. All the things of the world that are still attached to you in your flesh and in your character. The fire of heaven will come and burn every chaff out of your life in Jesus' name. And then you go through life courageous. You go through life uncompromising. You go through life compelling. And you have the Faith, the faith that stands and the faith that lives and the faith that goes through the fire and the fire will not burn you in Jesus name are you there I said are you there the Lord will do that work in your heart right now. Let's rise up now and talk to the Lord in prayer. We'll stand up now and we'll stand up to pray. We're asking our state of iniquity here to lead us in prayer in all that we have learned so that this hope in us will be demonstrated and anywhere we go, we will stand. You will stand in Jesus' name.